Howdy folks, Jeff Sangstack here. I want to talk about tracking motion in a video clip, an object or a person in motion, using After Effects. There are two ways you can track motion in After Effects, one using the tracker, and the other is Mocha. It's a standalone program that's kind of complicated, so we're, go we're going to focus only on tracker. I'm going to focus only on the fundamentals of using tracker, not some of the deeper details about tracker. So why track motion automatically in After Effects? Typically you want to track motion because you want to attach something to an object or a person in motion. You might want to put text here with uh, this person, who happens to be my daughter, going down our zip line. Or you might want to, let's say, highlight her with uh, maybe some, a color here with a different color in the background. Or uh, you might want to attach a graphic or something like that to an object in motion. Why do it automatically? Because doing it manually, you know, adding position keyframes as you uh, move through the clip, for example, you know, can be tedious and time consuming and fraught with errors. So if you do it automatically, so much the better. So let me show you how to do that. Here's this video that I've added to the project panel. We're looking at it here in the footage panels. That's just how you preview it. I'm going to make a new comp by taking that the video clip and dragging it down to the new composition icon. That makes a new composition using that video clip and opens up the comp panel and the composition matches the length of the clip and also the dimensions. Now I want to be able to track uh, my daughter here as she goes down the zip line. And so uh, the way I do that is I use something called the tracker inside After Effects. The tracker is typically not visible in the standard workspace. You can go to a different workspace and select motion tracking and that'll just basically open the uh, tracker uh, along with uh, sort of rearrange the panels a bit. But I'm kind of a fan of having my panels be sort of predictable. So I just go over to window, window up here in the menu and select tracker and that adds tracker down here in the corner. So the first thing you need to do is you want to tell Tracker what you want to do. And a lot of people get confused here because they go to see Motion Source and they pick the zip line and say, okay, now I'm ready to go, but what do I do? I don't, don't know what to do. It's not working the way I expect it to. No, you got to make this little guy active and then tell it this. What I want to track motion as opposed to stabilize motion. So I want to track the motion. So I click that. And that opens up a bunch of options here inside Tracker. And it also switches the view from the comp panel to the layer panel. You do your tracking in the layer panel and that confuses the heck out of people. They're, they they say, why? It's not working. It's not working. It's because they're in the wrong panel. But when I switched over here and turned this thing on, then the uh, layer panel became visible. And when I click on track motion, it, it, I, the motion source is the only clip we've got and the current track is the first tracker. When you click over here and say track motion, what that does is it adds this motion tracker submenu, sub layer here inside your uh, inside this particular layer, and inside this motion trackers is tracker one. It's the first tracker. You can have many, many trackers added to one layer. I could track not only my daughter, but I could track that tree, for example, if I wanted to attach something to that tree or highlight the tree for some reason as we pan by it. So we can have many trackers, and the first tracker you add is named by default tracker one. Now you need to identify what it is you want to track. You need to tell after Effects, what it is you want to track, and you use what's called the track point to do that. And the track point is this little guy here in the middle of this HD clip, so it's pretty small here in this particular view. I need to zoom in a bit on it to get a better handle on how I can move it around. So to zoom in on this window, I can just go down here to this uh, view area and to change it to something like 100%, or I can use the controller command and the plus key, or the, actually the equals key on the keyboard and zoom in on it that way. And then if I want to move this screen around, I hold down the space bar and that turns my cursor into a hand and I can drag it around. It works just like Photoshop if you've worked in Photoshop. So here's that uh, track point. And if I hover my cursor over it, it gets kind of tricky. Right here on the edge, it changes to a little box and that tells me I can change the shape or the, uh, the, the configuration of that little box. But when I get inside, it turns into a little black cross. If I hover over a white area, it turns, it changes to a white cursor but still has that little black cross so it's the same function. Then if I hover over this little cross in the middle it changes to a different kind of a cursor. So just be aware that there are different things that happen depending on where you position your cursor. What we have here is the attach point and the feature center and these are the areas that are the most important part of this process. So I'm going to drag this track point over to the object of the person I want to track. To do that I need to hover my cursor such that I get that little a black cross and then I can drag the whole thing as one unit and you see how it magnifies and if I get to the edge it, it'll pan the, the image so it's not if we're not in the right place we can pan it. And I want to just highlight here on her hair the bright area. I'm trying to get uh, a bright 
area versus a dark background is a great way to track motion. Now I let go of the uh, cursor and now I've got the track point position over here. And I want to, uh, this center the feature point here in the center of the feature region is really the area that's going to be tracked. This area outside here it sort of anticipates, it, it tells After Effects where to look for this region that you're trying to track. So what I do with this case, I try to make this a little bit bigger to tell, look inside here, but I don't want to make it really big because that makes After Effects work really hard. I do want to kind of lead the motion. So if I start dragging this guy to the right, you'll notice it goes to the left as well. So to make it go only to the right, I hold down to the controller or the command key and I can drag it to the right to have it anticipate the motion a little bit. Now this other little point at the attach point, it's not like the center of your search area or the center of your feature region. This is where you're going to attach an effect if you're going to attach an effect in this particular case. And you usually, you might want to attach it directly on top of the object that you're, fo that you're tracking, but sometimes you want to uh, attach it someplace else. So I'm going to actually attach some text here at some point. I want it not on her head, but above her head. So I take the attach point and move it up to here. And that's where the effect or the text will actually be connected to that attach point. This is the region that is going to be tracked, and this is just the place that's going to be used to attach something to it, and that'll follow along with the tracker. I'm going to go back out to the full view here to fit. And now I want to tell After Effects, follow the motion. And we'll see how it does. The way you tell it to follow the motion after you're all set up like this is you click this button in the lower right-hand corner here. We're back down to the tracker panel again to see, see where I am. And there's this little button to the right that says Analyze Forward. There's Analyze Forward and there's Analyze Backward. You can have it actually go backwards and analyze in reverse, which is uh, something that is worthwhile sometimes. It's because, let's say, you, you need to find a region that you, can, that you want to follow and uh, that object is eat more readily identifiable later in the clip. You can then uh, select it later in the clip and then analyze backward. But we're going to analyze forward here. So I'll just click Analyze Forward, and I'm not really totally sure that it's going to work because her hand goes in front of her head at one point, and we'll see if it follows her smoothly. And you can tell it follows her smoothly if this rectangle stays over her head. Let's see what happens here as she goes down the track, down the zip line. Already it jumped to her arm. See that? Jumped to her arm. It's jumping up in her arm again. So right off the bat, things aren't going well. It, it's, it's jumping around and things are not going the way I'd like them to go, which is not unusual when you're tracking motion and there are other things in motion in, in the same frame. So I'm going to go Control or Command Z to undo that. I'm going to take the clip a little bit farther in where her hand is past. And she does that little flip there. Right there is where I'm going to pick up the uh, point now instead of where she took her hand down. So I'll try again. I'll drag it down to her head. Set it up on the hair there. And we'll take take two here and see what happens. So I've got it lined up again. I'll go analyze forward. Now it's getting a little better. There we go. A little jumpy, but it's working pretty well. You can see that it's tracking smoothly. It's continuing to go smoothly. As long as that little track point stays over her, over her head there, it's doing its job. And by the time it gets down to the shade of the trees, it's probably going to lose its focus. But so far, so good. So we'll stop it now. And when you stop it, you can see all the keyframes that it made. Those are all position keyframes, essentially, that it followed the motion. And that's the, the feature center is what is showing up as those keyframes. And it did jump around a little bit, but all things considered, it's not bad. So I'm happy with how that went. And now I'll show you what we've got. We open up Tracker, and we open up the track point. We see we've got the feature center right there. That's this box that in the inside there. And the attach point down here, that's the little keyframes for the position that we're floating. Those keyframes those key are above this box. And then there's a thing called confidence, which basically says how confident is After Effects that it's actually following this thing correctly. And down there in the last keyframe, the confidence is only 46%, but earlier in the clip it will be up much higher because uh, the image is much easier to, fo easier to follow. So actually confidence is something you can uh, uh, put in as a property to say, look, at if, you, if your confidence drops below a certain number, stop tracking it. But this is the basic way to track. And now that we've got these tracking keyframes, we can use them multiple times. And I explain how to attach things to these uh, tracker keyframes in a separate tutorial. So that's how you use the tracker here inside After Effects to track an object or a person in motion.